Cannabaceae, the hemp family. It's phonetically spelled for you, Cannabaceae. Characteristics, these are dicots found in temperate zones, uh, almost always herbs, although they can get pretty tall. Usually palmate leaves with uh, serrated margins. The flowers are unisexual, which is, means uh, they're dioecious. Uh, the males are on one plant and females are on another plant. They're wind pollinated, so they produce a lot of pollen, uh, and they're not very showy because they're not trying to attract insects. The fruit is an achene, and uh, there are some pretty economically important um, members, uh, hemp or marijuana, and uh, also uh, hops used in beer making. Here are a couple lovely old drawings. On the left is uh, Cannabis sativa, classic uh, palmate uh, looking uh, um, leaves that um, you know you think of your hand with your fingers uh, when you look at it. And then uh, hops is on the right, uh, Humulus lupulus. <coughs> and again, you can see the palmate veins uh, in the uh, uh, leaf there and serrated edges again. These are in the order as Rosales. Uh, we've seen a couple other um, families in that same order. Cannabaceae. This is a very small family, two genera and three species. The taxonomy, taxonomy is under flux, though. Uh, if you look around, there's um, other areas where they had 170 species, and they even included hackberries, which is um, uh, a native Midwest uh, tree. Up at the top in the Rosales, we've seen that uh, location before on the plant evolutionary tree. So um, here are the uh, two primary species, uh, hops, hemp, and marijuana. And notice hemp and marijuana are the same species. Quotes about the Cannabaceae. I thought I might find something interesting for you, but all I can say is uh, there's a lot of quotes about the Cannabaceae on the Internet and uh, claiming that everybody from Nixon to George Washington uh, was a fan of marijuana. And uh, which leads me to say, um, when you're looking around on the Internet or any place else in the universe, keep an open mind, but not so open that your brains fall out. Okay, hops. Very important in beer making. Um, first noted as far back as um, the 10th century. And um, they think it was uh, one of the things that, that led to hops to be one of the um, uh, plants that people decided to commonly add to beer was because it actually has an antibacterial effect. So uh, by adding the uh, female flowers, um, they reduced bacteria in the beer. And of course, beer you're trying to ferment with yeast, which is a fungus. And so if you knock back the bacteria, you favor the yeast. So um, hops sort of uh, was selected for that um, aspect. And then uh, over time, different varieties were uh, developed that have uh, different amounts of bitterness and flavors and things that um, uh, affect the beer. They did originate in uh, China, Eurasia area. They're dioecious again. The female flowers are what's used. They're grown on vines. You can see in the lower right there, um, uh, quite a complicated system. Um, they're very high uh, labor to get these things harvested. And uh, it's a challenge in that the plants are very scratchy and cause a dermatitis um, to um, uh, people whose skin gets uh, scratched with it a lot. Um, they are technically not, actually not a vine, they're a bine, because the whole, the actual plant, the stem of the plant, winds around uh, this support, rather than uh, producing tendrils, the little curly things that look like a stipule, or a sucker that just uh, gloms onto something. Um, so, slight difference there. Uh, and today, there's a lot of varieties available for uh, different types of uh, effects that you want to have on beer flavors. And uh, Germany and the U.S. dominate production with uh, 56,000 metric tons produced annually. That's um, a lot of beer. Cannabis sativa, a variety known as hemp, which uh, is used uh, to um, produce fiber products. Uh, it has very low psychoactive uh, levels, so it's not um, uh, of any use to uh, try and ingest to uh, mellow out or whatever uh, people that like to smoke uh, marijuana would uh, be effects they would be looking for. It's considered one of the earliest domesticated plants uh, cultivated for at least 12,000 years. Um, it was cultivated in the Midwest uh, for many, many years as a, a fiber um, uh, crop and uh, was then made illegal when uh, marijuana um, uh, that was psychoactive was, became popular. However, there was, and that was in the 30s. Um, however, it was uh, replanted um, during uh, World War II when uh, Japan um, somehow uh, re 
reduce the availability of rope um, do for war use. And so uh, we began producing our own using uh, hemp grown in the Midwest. It's very fast growing. You can get up to 11 tons per acre per year. That's, uh, that's a lot of fiber. There are many claims that uh, it has reduced environmental impact. Um, anything that's going to grow that much is still going to need plenty of fertilizer and um, a decent amount of water, too. So in the end, uh, it's pretty much similar to growing high-yield wheat. It's used to produce clothing, like you can see um, in the, um, the picture there. And uh, even that bag, uh, it's a very sturdy fiber, so um, useful for um, that type of um, uh, product. It also um, produces oil that's used in some settings. Uh, it's used as bird seed. And uh, there even are, is a product called hempcrete that uh, is used in building, with several products um, related um, to building uh, for insula insulation and used as a renewable insulation. Um, at the end of the presentation here, there's a link you can follow to find out more about hempcrete products. The same species, cannabis sativa, is uh, used as marijuana. We've seen this before where um, uh, the same species uh, can have dramatically different um, uh, varieties. And, uh, you know, like with the um, uh, brassicaceae, the, the little um, original brassica that uh, is used to make everything from, it has now produces everything from kohlrabi to cabbage and um, dramatically different. Same case here. Um, obviously, very complicated issue with uh, marijuana. It's been estimated that it's actually the U.S. Cr the number one cash crop, uh, 36 billion dollars um, passing hands, which uh, exceeds the combined value of corn and wheat. Um, of course, making those estimates is, uh, is making estimates, whereas corn and wheat you're going to have a much more firm number. Um, the amount of marijuana actually trading hands is harder to pin down. So uh, the bottom line is it's, um, it's much more complicated than that and much is in flux with uh, some legalization occurring in uh, some states just in the last um, year or so. Uh, invasive species, there is a uh, humulus species, humulus japonica, um, sold as Japanese hops. It's an um, uh, attractive um, decorative species. However, um, it's quite invasive. Uh, it's invasive in Iowa. We have problems with it right in uh, Greenwood Park, uh, right around the pond. Um, it has the same scratchiness as the hops that are used in um, uh, beer, and so it makes uh, hand eradication very, very difficult because you just get this um, uh, massive irritation where it scratches the skin. You can see the gentleman standing in front of a large stand of it there. Uh, it forms dense stands because it's a vine it, um, or a vine. It winds over everything, and it'll grow up and over trees so much that it'll shade them out and kill them. It'll also uh, be so heavy it'll cause breakage. Very rapid growth rate and um, uh, high production rate. Many, many, many seeds produced per vine, sort of the um, standard invasive species behavior. Iowa natives, none. Um, just the non-native uh, hops and uh, the ditch weed hemp that grows in all our ditches. When hackberries were included in this um, genus or in this family, there was uh, um, that's a great native species, but it's no longer considered um, cannabaceae. Toxicity, uh, one of those dose mix of poison kind of things once again. The active compound in cannabis sativa is uh, delta 9 tetrahydrocannabinol. There's a drawing at the bottom for you in case you want to see what it looks like. That's just one of the cannabinoids in uh, cannabis. There are many, many others. It's probably the um, dominant one. And interestingly, um, it's been discovered that these mimic naturally occurring uh, endocannabinoids that occur in humans. And that's probably why um, it's useful for chemotherapy patients in that it reduces pain reduction and nausea uh, by bi binding to um, uh, receptors that are um, set up for endocannabinoids. Uh, recreational use uh, is beyond the scope of this um, uh, discussion. Um, it causes a range of personality shifts that vary with the dosage, the user, and the amount of repetition. Uh, as I already mentioned, hemp uh, has uh, greatly reduced cannabinoid levels, so uh, no, um, no psychoactive uh, um, results from ingestion of, of hemp. Humulus uh, causes many um, uh, uh, severe skin irritation by people using, uh, working with the plants. Uh, some folk medicine that um, suggests using hemp um, for different um, um, purposes, medical purposes, warn that it can lead to drowsiness. And um, uh, the American Society for Prevention of Cruelty to Animals reports that uh, dogs that have ingested uh, hops 
uh, can have severe panting, a high temperature, and uh, seizures that can even lead to death. Uh, that concludes the Cannabaceae. Uh, you can see um, quite a bit more on Wikipedia pages. Um, there's an interesting report there about um, uh, the amount of energy used by uh, indoor pot growing facilities where pot has been um, uh, made legal for medical purposes, um, it's often grown indoors and um, one report said that uh, more electricity was used for indoor marijuana production because they need really high intensity lights than all of the solar energy captured in the United States. Again, that's one of those uh, difficult to actually assess items. And then uh, information on invasive Japanese hops and control is the bottom link there. That concludes the Cannabaceae.